Hello everyone and welcome to this tutorial. So today what I'm going to be talking about is how you can access browser local storage via JavaScript. So local storage is space reserved by the browser into which you can store data. It's about 10 megabytes of capacity per domain. And the reason that it's so useful is because you can store data there that will persist beyond the current page without the need for any backend programming. So to demonstrate, I've created a simple app here that you can use to enter new items into local storage. And when you go onto the next page, it prints the contents of local storage, which is currently empty because I cleared it before this tutorial. So I'll create a new item in local storage now. I'll give it a key of test and a value of one, two, three. Now, when I click add item, as soon as I've done that, it's been added to local storage. So now if we go to the next page, it's retrieving the contents of local storage and printing it to the page. And therefore we see the item that we just created. Now, once something is saved in local storage, it's not just persistent across pages like we just saw, but also across user sessions. So I'm going to end the current session on what is localhost now. So as soon as I close, the browser that is ending the session and I start a new session on that page, you see that data is still there. It's still being retrieved from local storage. And in fact, the only way that it does get deleted is if that's done with JavaScript or by the user intentionally clearing their browser history, including their site data. So with local storage data that you store there is basically persistent unless intentionally cleared. Now, sometimes you do want that behavior but sometimes you don't. You might sometimes want data to just persist there during the user session and be cleared at the end of it for security and also maybe for privacy reasons. So if you do want that behavior, you can save data to session storage instead of local storage, and that will get cleared at the end of the user session. But in order not to add any unnecessary confusion at the beginning of this tutorial, let's focus just on local storage first and I'll return to session storage a little later on. So local storage is accessible on the global window object. So the full reference to it would be window.localStorage, but because it's on the global window object, you can omit the window reference. And stored on this object are all the functions that you need to be able to interact with local storage. So to create a new item in local storage, you call the setItem method, and you have to pass in two arguments. The first is the key you want to assign to the item. So this is an identifier that you'll be using to access its value. And the second argument is the value itself. Now, it's very important to understand that you can only store data in string format in local storage. If you try to pass something in there that isn't a string, like this number five here, or this object, then JavaScript will attempt to coerce it to a string. Now, sometimes this might turn out the way you want. Sometimes it can lead to unexpected results. So I'll just save this and we'll take a look at those items in local storage. So the big issue is for the data item whose value was an object we've basically lost that now. And for the score item, this was a number five. It's now a string value five. So for the score, that's coerced it in a way that is not unacceptable, even though it has changed the type to string. But for the data item, it's gone very wrong. So we basically lost the data. Now you can pass objects, arrays, and even files like images through local storage. So in these cases, before saving it to local storage, what you need to do is to convert the data to string and then store it in local storage. And then when you retrieve it, convert it from string back to its original format. So if you do want to store an object or an array in local storage, what you should do is wrap it in the JSON stringify method. This will convert it to a JSON string. So let's access local storage. You now see that the data item, the data is not lost. It's in JSON string format, and I will be able to convert that back to a JavaScript object using the JSON pass method. Now, if you want to pass an image through local storage, it's the same approach, except you use the file reader 
to convert the image to a base64 encoded string. So because this is an introductory tutorial, I'm not going to cover this here, but I have covered that in another video I made recently. So if you're interested in that, a link to that should be appearing about now on screen. So continuing with our ongoing example, let's talk about how you can retrieve data from local storage. So if you want to get the value of a single item in local storage, you can call the getItem method, passing in the key of the item you want to get the value for, and that's just going to return to you the value there. So we get back the value Harry for nickname. Now, if the item you want to retrieve is a JavaScript object or an array, then what you're going to want to do is to wrap that get item call in json.pass. What that is going to do is to convert that JSON string back to a JavaScript object. So if I do it without the json.pass, this is the object as a string. So I don't want it in string format, I want it as an object. So if I wrap it in json.pass now, that will convert it from string back to its original format of a JavaScript object. And it's exactly the same process that you need to follow for arrays. So next, what if instead of retrieving items individually, like we've been doing so far, you want to retrieve all of the items in local storage, either the keys, the values, or the keys and the values together. So you've got several options for doing this. So if you want to get the contents of local storage back as a JavaScript object, then what you can do is create a new object and spread the entire contents of local storage into it. So you might be familiar with using spread for arrays. It also works if you want to spread an object like object like this one into a JavaScript object. So if we look at that in the console, you see that we've now got the local storage data in JavaScript object format. If you want to get the data as an array, then you can do that as well. So what you want to do is again, pass local storage into something and it's into one of the following methods. So if you want an array of values only, then you call object.values. That's going to give you back the values in an array. If you want an array of keys only, then all you have to do is change the method from values to keys. And then you get an array of the keys only. Finally, if you want to get back both the keys and the arrays, in an array of arrays format, then you can call the entries method. So what this returns in this case is an array containing four arrays. And each of those arrays contains two items. The first one is the key in each case, and the second one is the value. Now a behavior of local storage that you should be aware of is that if you try to set an item in local storage that already exists, then it won't throw an error. It will silently overwrite that item, completely overwrite it, value and key. So it's very important to know how you can check local storage to see if an item with a particular key already exists to prevent any unwanted overwriting. So you can do this by querying the value of the item you're interested in. So I know that the nickname item already exists and you want to check if that value is equal to null. If it is, then that item doesn't exist in local storage. So we know that nickname exists. So if I try to set a new value for nickname here, I'll try to change the name from Harry to Steve. And we take a look at local storage. You see that it's still Harry there we've protected our item nickname from being overwritten with the new one. And just to show you what would happen if we didn't do that, so if we didn't check to see if nickname existed already, then it's actually going to silently overwrite 
the original values. So if you're setting an item to local storage and you're using the name of a key that might already exist, then you may want to add this if statement beforehand in order that you don't overwrite any important data that is stored there. Now, finally, for methods on local storage, if you want to remove an individual item, then you can do so by calling local storage dot remove item followed by the key in here. So I'll remove the data item. And if we have a look at local storage now, you see that the data item no longer exists. And if you want to clear local storage completely, you can do that with a single method calling clear. You don't need to pass anything in there. So now you see local storage is completely empty. Now I mentioned earlier that there is a similar alternative to local storage called session storage. So the only difference between local storage and session storage is session storage clears itself at the end of a user session. So I'll show you that by going back to the simple app that I showed you at the beginning of this tutorial. So it's index.html here. Now, if you look at what's going on here, every time the add button is clicked, so I'll bring up the page here, you see the add item button here. So every time this button is clicked, what's happening is an item is being set to local storage, and that is going to be the value of the key input and the value in local storage is going to be the value of the value input. So the text input here with the ID of key and the text input here with the ID of value. Now from earlier, you may remember that whenever we add an item to local storage here and go to the next page, so it's been added to local storage, I can then close the browser completely and when I come back to that page so I ended the session and I started a new one and the data is still there it will still be there next week next month unless I clear historical data from my browser or I revisit this page JavaScript runs and clears local storage this data here is going to remain there indefinitely now sometimes that can be useful but sometimes it can present a privacy and a security issue. On the privacy side, the direction of travel, at least in some places, is towards not storing anything in local storage. That's not absolutely necessary to the functioning of a website or app. And on the security side, if your site or app has a vulnerability and somebody can run JavaScript on your page while a user is on your site, then the malicious actor would be able to extract user's data from local storage and send it to their server. So you may want to limit the amount of time that data is stored to absolutely necessary to minimize this risk. So for both of these reasons, you may want to use session storage instead of local storage. It works in exactly the same way as local storage, except the entire contents of session storage gets wiped at the end of the user session. So I've literally just replaced local storage with session storage here. And that is all I need to do on this page. On the second page, I'm retrieving the data from local storage here. I want to get it from session storage instead. So again, just literally replacing local storage with session storage. Okay, so you can see that live server actually stored something in session storage there, that's interesting. So now I'll add a new item to session storage. So you see it's added that item there. Now I'm going to close the browser, therefore closing the session, open up a new browser instance. Now if I go back to page two, you see that session storage is empty. So it's been automatically cleared for me. And the nice thing about this behavior is that if the user closes the browser, then it's going to clear automatically. I don't have to worry about it running a clear method. If you're using local storage, it's not guaranteed that that clear method is going to run. But if the user ends the session, which surely they will do at some point, then you can be sure that that data 
has been wiped from the user's browser. So that's it for this introduction to local storage. But if you'd like to take the learning further, I have done a couple of other videos on local storage. So one on how you can estimate the space in local storage. So unfortunately, there's no native method for doing that. Otherwise, I would have showed you in this video. But in that video, I show you a workaround for how you can do that and also how you can pass files by images through local storage in another video. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. It helps us with the algorithm and other people to find this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this from us in the future, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel.